Welcome to TV20 News. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Hasledge. On Easter Sunday this year, Cleveland native Robert Godwin Sr. was shot live on Facebook. To honor the man that was loved by the community, city officials joined Mr. Godwin's family and friends to unveil a new street sign and celebrate his life. My father was amazing. He was amazing. I thank everybody in the city of Cleveland for all the love and the nice felt wishes that you've given us, Mr. Johnson and, and the mayor and around the city. City officials spoke about the impact Mr. Godwin and his death had in the community. I was talking to the councilman earlier and he mentioned to me how the Godwin house was really a community house where people could come and they could feel, uh, children could feel safe and that uh, anytime someone needed something, they could always depend on Mr. Godwin. So I, I want to say to the Godwin family how much uh, we will miss him as a city and, and the tragedy that resulted and, and him not being here is a tragedy that we will always uh, uh, look to as something that we should not have in this city. This case exemplified a great tragedy for the family of Mr. Godwin and for the citizens of Cleveland and the people around the country. Like many of you, I remember the day with shock and sadness, as in many tragic incidents, goodness outshadows the darkness. Ward 10 Councilman Jeff Johnson explained the reason they did the dedication at East 146th Street. The reason why we did East 146th is because Mr. Godwin um, was such a, a major force on this street. And you know, when we designate streets, it's, it's not done frequently. It's done because there's something special about that individual and his connection or her connection to a street. In his case, he was well known. He, was, he cared about the neighbors. He was very active in the community. Um, his house with his, his big, big family was really the house for, the, for that street. And every time I hear from the um, residents of, of, of 146th Street, they tell me about how Mr. Godwin was, and, and Mrs. Godwin were so great to them, their street mother and father. So I wanted, I wanted to respond to the request by the family to, um, to acknowledge that, and I totally agreed with, with doing this. The wife of Mr. Godwin, Dorothy, said there's only one word she hopes people think of when they see the sign. I want them to think about that, that four-letter word, love and how you can love, and I want them to think about forgiveness. The City of Cleveland held a panel luncheon for its residents to discuss environmental and housing issues that most Clevelanders face today and how the city is responding to those issues. The discussion is a part of Cleveland's Healthy Home Month, and Cleveland Mayor Frank Jackson welcomed those in attendance. Healthy Homes uh, and the Healthy Homes Month is very important to us, and I'll tell you why. Uh, because it really deals with people and and having a healthy home is all about uh, whether it's the home that you actually live in or the neighborhood, the community, the city. To me, uh, our entire community, our environment that we are exposed to every day is really our home. Cleveland's Director of Public Health, Merrill Gordon, explained to the crowds what a healthy home means. According to HUD, a healthy home is one that is marked not only by the absence of health and safety threats from lead, indoor allergens, radon, carbon monoxide in the built environment, but also one that nourishes physical, mental, social, and environmental well-being. The panel was made up of a variety of experts, including Ayanna Blue Donald, Cleveland's Interim Director of Building and Housing, and Pamela Ashby, the Director of the Housing and Urban Development's Cleveland office. Afterwards, audience members were able to ask the panelists their own questions. You can learn more about Cleveland's Healthy Home Initiative by visiting the city's website. Well, a new luxury living complex is finally coming to the North Coast Harbor. It's called the Harbor Verandas and it's located off East 9th behind the Rock Hall where the skate park used to be. Richard Pace, president of Cumberland Development, says the Harbor Verandas will have a prime location. 
And the important piece of it is that there are going to be people living on our lakefront again. It's been 100 years since uh, anyone lived along the shore. So uh, we're going to have that uh, on our downtown lakefront. We're going to have uh, not only the residential component, but also office and retail. So we're moving our offices down here and we're going to have uh, retail as well. So we'll have a couple restaurants and uh, Cleveland bike tours and some other retail operators. At the groundbreaking ceremony, Mayor Frank Jackson said this project is one of many that he hopes will eventually unify the city. And it's just a series of things that we'll be doing over the coming years to ensure that Cleveland is a city where there is no east side, there is no west side, there's just one Cleveland and everything will emanate from the lake and we'll all face the lake and we'll see the greatest asset that we have is our waterfront. The Harbor Verandas will have much to offer its residents, not to mention being a stone's throw distance from the Rock Hall, Science Center and First Energy Stadium. It will be three stories tall, 16 apartments, each with a minimum 10 foot by 15 foot veranda. It's an outdoor room that's covered with these fantastic views that are all around us. Every unit will have these views. Half of the units are corner units, uh, so they'll have not only great views, but great natural light. They'll provide an active lifestyle setting unmatched in the city. They'll, they'll be next to the marina here with the boating, next to the bike trails, next to the jogging paths, next to the parks, and next to downtown. Construction on the Harbor Verandas has already begun with a completion date of summer of 2018. For more information, visit cumberland-development.com. Mayor Frank Jackson was a recipient of a special award from a company that is currently upgrading Cleveland's mobile infrastructure. The company is called Mobility, and they are in town right now working on a project that will soon be boosting your cell service, says Senior VP for Network Strategy, Jason Caliento. They'll have uh, speed and coverage where they haven't had it before. Um, so if that's uh, them accessing social media networks, uh, doing email, uh, accessing different advanced apps, uh, whether that's for entertainment um, or for uh, work, they're able to access all of those things at a much faster rate uh, than they have in the past. Caliento and his team are in Cleveland to present Mayor Jackson with Mobility's Connected City Award. Uh, the Connected City Award really honors the cities that uh, have set up uh, a, uh, an infrastructure for facilitating the type of investment that we're making. So we look at a number of different criteria. Uh, first is demonstrated vision and leadership in, in bringing uh, fifth generation technology to the city. Second is clear policies and procedures uh, and costs that allow us to deploy cost effectively. We, we look at uh, how, how the city is fostering a public-private partnership that allows for us to invest uh, in the community and, in, uh, and, and to create jobs and to uh, develop infrastructure. And then finally, we look at cities that have policies that look to address the digital divide. Basically, uh, are, are we serving underserved areas in that city uh, and is there a commitment to uh, uh, all socioeconomic areas of the city? So is mobility working in Cleveland right now? Yes. So right now, uh, we, we have a large project here. It's about uh, 60 different locations throughout the city that we're locating what we call nodes uh, throughout the city. Um, and uh, this past uh, month, in August, we actually started turning the first ones on air. Uh, and really, between now and the end of the year, uh, all 60 will be on air and providing service here in the city of Cleveland. After receiving the award, Mayor Jackson sat down with Mr. Caliento to learn more about how Mobility's new technology will benefit Cleveland residents. For more information on Mobility, visit their website at mobility.com. And it's important to note, Mobility is spelled M-O-B-I-L-I-T-I-E. <laughs> and thanks to a collaborative effort between Cleveland City Councilman Zach Reed, three community development corporations, and a nonprofit organization, formerly incarcerated residents will be given a second chance, all while making the city a more beautiful and safe place. TV20 reporter Christian Patterson brings us the story. Yes, Leah, I'm here at Killingsworth Meeting Place in Ward 2 for the Building Futures program. 
a program that's dedicated to putting residents to work as well as rebuilding our neighborhoods. So what we've done here today is first of all to say, great job, keep going. Now we're gonna give them the opportunity to learn a skill. We're gonna give them the opportunity to put some money in their pocket. But we're also gonna give them the opportunity to go back into a community that they may have harmed, that they may have done some damage to, and to be able to help rebuild that ward, rebuild that community, and rebuild that neighborhood. A local nonprofit organization by the name of Passages will be in charge of training the participants with soft skills as well as hard skills. I saw a need um, uh, for, for individuals to kind of obtain uh, gainful employment. I mean, the average starting salary, I think, in, in, in Ohio for a tradesman is about $56,000. Um, so, you know, I mean, and, and they're, they're forgiving. Uh, I forgot to mention that, you know, about 80% of the folks that we work with at Passages are re-entry, uh, formerly incarcerated. Um, so folks are looking for second chances. So we said, why not a, carpenter, a carpentry program? Studies have shown that nothing stops a bullet like a job. That individuals that have jobs, that make pretty good money, do not go out and commit violent crimes. We, we too believe that um, this opportunity can, can not just bode well for, for all the clients participating in it, but also for the communities that we're looking to, to um, you know, install this program in. Um, and, you know, a lot of the folks that we work with are coming from this ward, so it, it just made all the sense in the world to partner um, and make this a Ward 2-based uh, program to start um, in hopes that, you know, after it catches fire and, uh, you know, we start renovating homes and, and you know, transforming neighborhoods and, and lives, it's going to catch on Cleveland-wide. What we've done here in Ward 2 can be duplicated throughout the city of Cleveland. There are a number of vacant houses in the city of Cleveland that could be rehabbed. And instead of bringing in individuals, individuals from the outside to rehab them, why don't you use the people right in the community? And our hope is that we will begin to show that this program works. And, 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 and you can ramp it up. And you can build it up. And that there are unemployed men and women in our wards, in our communities, that given the opportunity, they want to go to work. We got to give them the opportunity to go to work. Reporting from Killingsworth Meeting Place in Ward 2, I'm Christian Patterson for TV20. We are Cleveland. Mrs. Dorothy McIntyre was a pioneer in aviation, having been one of the first African-American women to have a private pilot's license. A historical marker honoring Mrs. McIntyre was recently unveiled in Ward 2's Mount Pleasant neighborhood. Councilman Zach Reed says the marker is about more than just honoring someone who is well known in the community. This is all about our children. I mean, really. I mean, like I said, I grew up here on 139th and Kinsman, and we heard the stories of the Jim Browns and the Carl B. Stokes and all these other individuals that grew up, that lived here in Mount Pleasant. If we don't let people know that this community still is and once was one of those historic African-American neighborhoods where people came into the community and they were pioneers like Ms. McIntyre. The family of Dorothy McIntyre also celebrated a huge milestone at the event. And another of the reasons that we are here in this year, 2017, is to commemorate our mother's, it would be her 100th birthday this year. Yes. And so yes. we are remembering our mother, and one of the things that we've done, we have cake and punch for everyone here, and what we have on the cake is looking at 100, because that's what our mother would always say. Yes. And she passed in 2015 and almost made it to 99, so we yes. wanted to make sure that she knows we're celebrating her today. Yes. Her spirit is here with us. We know that. And her picture is going to be there forever. <laughs> forever. So she's ongoing. Oh, we're so pleased. We're so happy. The Cleveland Police Foundation held a luncheon and awards ceremony at the Quicken Loans Arena recently to honor the high school students who successfully completed their new Public Safety Career Pipeline Summer Program. Angela Bennett was the coordinator for the program. The purpose of the Law Enforcement Career Pipeline Program, which is now known as the Public Safety Career Pipeline Program, was to increase the number of women and minorities in law enforcement starting with our high school kids. 
planting the seeds with them, giving them the training, and basically cultivating our kids so that as they grow up and move into careers in law enforcement, we've already cultivated that community policing mindset and, and really produced some highly qualified officers. Mayor Frank Jackson offered his congratulations to the young men and women and hoped the program was eye-opening for them. And I hope as you went through the program, you have a, a better understanding and a better perspective on what it means to serve, what it means to be a public servant, uh, particularly in the public safety uh, field. Tyrance James is a senior at Martin Luther King High School and told the crowd of his experience in the program and how it gave him some perspective on his future career. It showed me that even though I want to be a police officer, it will never hurt to try something different. My favorite thing about the Summer Academy was being able to travel to different law enforcement agencies and being able to experience various training techniques that they put us through, they put us through as the same as their officers. So this summer our kids were involved in the five week intensive hands-on training program. They were exposed to different um, training um, in police, fire, EMS. Um, our kids were also um, exposed to careers in the judicial system. For more information on the Public Safety Career Pipeline Summer Program, visit the Cleveland Police Foundation's website at clevelandpolicefoundation.org. Well, don't change that channel. We'll be right back with more TV20 News. Hi, I'm Mayor Frank Jackson. You've probably seen media coverage of the growing opioid epidemic in Northeast Ohio. But what you might not know is how many of these tragedies begin with a seemingly innocent prescription for pain medication. That is why we're teaming with the Cuyahoga County Opiate Marketing Task Force to encourage you to know the risk. Go to the website on your screen to learn which pills are opiates and alternative ways of dealing with pain. Which starts as a prescription can end with addiction, so know the risk. Welcome back to TV20 News. The Cleveland Cultural Gardens marked its 72nd annual One World Day celebration, parade, and festival. It was a beautiful day for the Parade of Flags as hundreds of people lined Martin Luther King and East Boulevards for the annual One World Day. One by one, different countries held their flags proudly as they walked through the parade route. Mayor Frank Jackson says this event highlights the great ethnic diversity of the city, which is really important. You know, Cleveland is made up of many different nationalities, races, and ethnicity, and it's part of our uh, strength. It's part of who Cleveland is, is our identity. And then uh, uh, the swearing in of and the nationalization of, of people to become American citizens, it works well together. So you got the One World Day, in the nationalization process. It's a good, good, very good event. Shemeli's Yana. As the mayor mentioned, 25 people were sworn in as new American citizens by federal judge Solomon Oliver. The judge told them, we cherish diversity. Over 3,000 breast cancer survivors, their family members, and friends gathered in downtown Cleveland for the Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure. The 5K walk and run raises money for the organization and gives hope and encouragement to those that have battled the disease. So I am here as a survivor supporting all the other survivors as we fight against breast cancer. I've been part of this probably for the past 20 years and never imagined that I would be walking for myself. But here I am, a seven year survivor, and I am so encouraged about all the people that are here standing up fighting against breast cancer. Well, I've been doing it ever since it started in Cleveland and then I became a survivor 10 years ago. It's, it's good for people to all come together to, to celebrate their life and their survivorship. Well, I dress this way to support my friends that are survivors of breast cancer and those who are currently going through the process. It's a beautiful morning here. And it is, it's so cool to see. 
that comes out for this cause to support their family members, friends, whoever. And it's just a chance for you know everybody to come together and support one another and uh, make sure you know they get get through any tough times. And it's just been an overwhelming support here. And this is the 24th year for the Cleveland Race for the Cure. And it's just been unbelievable today, this morning. Local t-shirt company, GV Art and Design, created a custom tee for this special event. Susan G. Coleman approached us about doing a shirt and designing a shirt. So we took a popular shirt of ours and applied it to, obviously, the pink campaigns. It's a great event, but it's also great for people to just be involved and have that awareness that you know cancer is real and it affects us and uh, just to have that support is great. I feel great. I got love, support and this really helps too. It's great. Awesome. Well I started doing the breast cancer walk four years ago and our team name was Nobby Knockers and a very good friend of mine put a theme as Nobby Knockers Knots Out Cancer. Woo! For more information on Susan G. Komen, Northeast Ohio and future Race for the Cures visit ComenNEOhio.org. The City of Cleveland Department of Recreation hosted their annual show wagon at Edgewater Park. Talented kids between the ages of 5 and 17 perform for family, friends, and residents at the free event. This year's theme was the classic Cinderella. Show wagon is part of the Youth Performing Arts Series at Cadell Fine Arts. For more information, visit the City of Cleveland website or call 216-664-2562. A City of Cleveland Rec Center received a big gift from the Word Church, which will help them to educate people on the sweet science of boxing. Boxers at the Lonnie Burton Rec Center at the Outhway Estates is now the home to this brand new boxing ring. A couple months ago, Dr. R.A. Vernon, the senior pastor at the Word Church, came by the rec center and noticed they were in need of a new boxing ring. The previous ring was old and needed to be replaced, so the church came together to help the community. I, I grew up across the street in Longwood. This is the first place I played basketball, boxed. Uh, just stopped up here to check on things a couple of months ago and saw this was the same boxing rink from 30, 40 years ago. I said, we got to do something about that. So uh, my deacon, Deacon Sam Sparks, decided to go partner with me and we just wanted to get a new boxing ring so the kids could feel just more fulfilled, like we haven't forgot about them. This area needs this. And so uh, you never forget where you came from. Whatever else Jesus is about, he's about helping those who don't have. So we're excited today. Besides Wonderful providing a new ring, ring for the recreational you, center, Pastor and, uh, Vernon also gave the boxing me. ring a thank special blessing. Thank you for all those that... It was a tail wagging, nose sniffing, tongue slobbering, barking good time at this year's third annual City Dogs Reunion. The dogs were once housed at the Cleveland City Kennel but have since found their forever homes. Michelle Harvinek, adoption coordinator for the kennel, is responsible for sending Edgewater Beach's kite field to the dogs. It's just an opportunity for adopters and dogs adopted from the city kennel to get together and celebrate their awesome dogs and our awesome adopters. Um, so we've got a bunch of dogs here and we've got a bunch of contests and a lot of fun going on. They certainly had a fun time at this year's reunion. There were many things for the pups to partake in, including games and contests. The dogs could even express their artistic side at the painting center. Mayor Frank Jackson and Ward 15 Councilman Matt Zone even stopped by to enjoy the pooch party. Harvinick says that if you are looking to get a new dog, the best way is to go through City Dogs. So City Dogs is the adoption program of the Division of Animal Care and Control, I'm part of the Department of Public Safety for the City of Cleveland. So we impound about 3,600 to 4,000 stray dogs annually, the division does. Um, so having a strong adoption program is really important to find positive outcomes for those dogs that we pick up. Um, most of our dogs that we get from the city of Cleveland are pit bull and pit bull mixes. So that's what our adoption program really um, is comprised of, a lot of mixed breed dogs, bigger, short fur, mixed breed dogs. And if you would like more information on the Cleveland Kennel or would like to give a dog a forever home, visit their website at pettango.com forward slash C-A-C-C. Well, there's only two of them in the entire United States, and one of them is right here in Cleveland. TV20's Enrique Correa has more on a unique vending machine that might give Domino's a run for their money. 
This is not your average vending machine. It's called the Pizza ATM, and Case Western Reserve University is the only place in Cleveland that you'll find one. Now students and staff at the university can swipe their card, pick out their pizza, it goes into the oven, then it comes out of the machine already in a box to go in only three minutes. Uh, it's pretty interesting. This is where I like to say where freshness meets technology. So what we have here is our loading system. So we're going to access the stocking mode of the machine. First, the pizzas are assembled at Case Western's catering service, Bon Appetit. Then the pies are loaded into the pizza machine until someone orders one. When we reference the stock, you can see we have different colored uh, codes here that tell us where we are in the uh, shelf life of the pizza. Green means it's very fresh. Those are the items we loaded in this morning. We have about a 60 hour shelf life, which we try to process our pieces in a timely fashion so that it doesn't happen to ever reach that 60 hours. Chef Gacken says the pizza ATM is getting very popular among students and staff. They realize just the, how unique this is. I mean, it's only the second one in the country. So we're in the forefront and they're really excited. They love having access to it 24 hours. And uh, just the convenience of literally hitting a button and in three and a half minutes you have a freshly baked pizza. And students who've eaten the pizza say they like the easy availability. It's faster and you can get good pizza, which the best other pizza you can get in the area is Little Italy. So having it right here on campus is phenomenal. Definitely convenient um, and there are lots of vegetarian options, which um, I definitely appreciate. So I've never had a pizza from an ATM machine before, so I definitely had to give it a try. That's really good. So if you see an ATM machine that's making pizza in your neighborhood, I would definitely check it out. In Cleveland, I'm Enrique Correa, TV20. We are Cleveland. For the first time ever, Tri-C is hosting a tasty food festival at Mall B in downtown Cleveland. The new food theme festival is called the Cleveland Eats Culinary Festival, organized by the Hospitality Management Center of Excellence at Cuyahoga Community College. The family-friendly festival will include culinary competitions and classes, food from the region's top restaurants, craft beer tastings, and live entertainment. Proceeds from the festival will raise scholarship money for the Tri-C culinary students and the city's next generation of chefs. Organizers say some of the finest foods in the nation come out of Cleveland's kitchens. We want to give people a taste of what's here. The event itself is a uh, partnership between some of the top chefs in the city that are our culinary council, combined with our faculty and staff to do this event, which is essentially a celebration of Cleveland culinary of our past, which is rooted in great ethnic heritage in terms of our great neighborhoods and the restaurants and the ethnicity, the current restaurant scene that's taking place in our city, which is really over the top right now, and a celebration of the future and a nurturing of the future, which is what's here at the Hospitality Management Center in the restaurateurs and the culinarians of the future of the industry. The festival will be this Saturday, September 16th on Mall B above Huntington Convention Center from noon to 10 p.m. And the festival will conclude with a fireworks display. Well, the baby giraffe that was born at Cleveland Metro Park Zoo back in August finally has a name. The name for the African Masi giraffe calf is Zawadi, which means gift in its native language. Zawadi has been receiving a lot of attention at the zoo since his birth. His name was selected after a successful name voting drive, which netted more than $2,300 and will go to supporting giraffe conservation. Currently, there are less than 80,000 giraffes around the globe. Zawadi now weighs more than 210 pounds and stands more than 7 feet tall and will continue to grow for years to come. The sixth edition of 2017's Dancing with the Cleveland Stars took place August 26th at the Days Inn in Richfield. Seven Clevelanders, including yours truly, competed for the coveted Mirrorball Trophy, but it was all to raise money and awareness for a great cause. The idea for this event happened some 12 years, 12 years ago when um, Dancing with the Stars originally aired on television. They're now in their 25th or 26th season. I watched the show and I was like, hey, I can do that. 
And so what I did is I recruited and uh, solicited some local celebrities in my hometown. And uh, we had some on-air personalities and some radio personalities. And I brought them in and I taught them the routines that they perform on the show. And it was a huge success. So I uh, developed a formula to where we can help raise money for any particular charity we want to. At the moment, we're doing it for Lupus Foundation of America. Last year, I did it for the Lift Fit with Lupus. And before that, I've done it with other charities as the Leukemia Lymphoma Society, Gilda's Club, and the American Diabetes Association. If you're a local business owner or a professional, you get a great um, opportunity to network with the community. Um, also, you get a great opportunity to uh, meet and gain new friends. And for those people who are looking for a type of activity to get in or stay in shape, I put you through that. You get a chance to get in front of all your friends and family of fans and show off your moves and um, meet a lot of cool people that's involved in the show and help raise money for charity. Congratulations to Millie McKenzie, who took home the top prize. For more information on the Lupus Foundation of America and how you can get involved in the next Dancing with the Cleveland Stars, visit lupus.org backslash Ohio or call 440-717-0183. Thanks to everyone who participated and to help me raise money for the Lupus Foundation. And thank you for watching TV20. We are Cleveland. I'm Leah Haslidge. Up next, we'll have Christian Patterson with the Inside Sports Report.